Those of you here tonight are doing an extraordinary job telling people's stories, talking about the drivers of violence and helping all of us articulate what needs to happen to ensure an Australia free of violence against women and their children. The way communities of interest can come together online to really push an issue and focus on things that maybe had been ignored by more traditional mainstream media is really encouraging. Ladies and gentlemen, our watch is here to encourage action and leadership, big and small, political and community-based, because violence against women and children is preventable. You need truth to progress, and unless people appreciate and understand the lives people live and what they endure, it's never going to change. So it's vital that journalists are acknowledging it and making documentaries about it and programs about it and news stories about it and not siding with the perpetrator. Violence Against Women sucks. I know this because my sister was murdered on the 9th of January last year when her partner decided, when she told him that she wanted to leave him, that he had a right to stab her. And every year on my dad's birthday, I give him a bunch of selfies and other things that Nikki and I would have shared together. So if you don't mind doing me a favour, I'm going to take my phone out now and I want you all to gather in because this is going to my dad. And from my perspective, it's extremely important that, that the situation for women with disabilities is also understood and correctly reported on. Before he killed my mother, my father made the sickening boast that he was going to make history out of her death. I say, let's work together to make a different kind of history. One where violence against women is a thing of the past. One where women become statistics reflecting equality, not death. Tomorrow is my birthday which I know should be a day of celebration, but sadly I also will share it forevermore with the anniversaries of the deaths of my niece and my nephew who were murdered at the hands of their father. It really is up to um, the media and others to bring this issue to attention, to um, take away some of the stigma that might be involved for people to talk about this issue publicly. It's our job, we expose stories that you don't necessarily see in your day-to-day -day life. There's an atmosphere here of camaraderie, uh, of support, and it feels like a safe atmosphere. At least if we can talk about it, at least if we can get it into people's lounge rooms, it's got to help and it must make people who watch feel in some way that they are a little bit less isolated. It doesn't take the pain away, but it must make them feel less isolated. Is enough really being done? I fear not. So let me conclude by saying, until the numbers start to decline, I do not think this story has been told. So ladies and gentlemen, this is only the beginning of our fight. Really awesome to see, it wasn't very long ago, that the only um, people in the community who were responding to family violence was, you know, women's services. And what we're seeing is a community actually acting together to keep uh, women and children safe. <laughs> um, we just thought we were getting a day off work, come to Sydney, <laughs> and it'd be a bit of fun. This took hours of uncomfortable conversations with people to get information that should be publicly available. Uh, yeah. Our watch, um, as it was said earlier, gives the resources to do this better. So I think Sarah Ferguson was saying that this is not something she was a specialist in until she got interested in it. And then our watch gave her the resources to do it. And so that's the same for us. It gives us the numbers to put on the bottom of the story. It gives us the correct statistics to put in a story, to put this in the right context. So yeah, thank you, our watch. <laughs>